What is going on guys and girls, it's Ghost Robo, and we're here for the very critical, very crucial, very important, very epic, much requested, always requested, PlayStation 4 or Xbox One, which should you buy video. Now let me be very clear what this video is, which it is my personal opinion, about what you should buy at launch. I'm not going to go into huge speculation on which system is going to win the generation, on which system is going to have the best catalog of games after a year, just going to talk about my extensive and thorough hands-on and eyes-on experiences with both boxes at E3, and what I think would be the better purchase come this fall based on facts and figures and games. And we're going to focus on exclusives, because yeah, AC4, Watch Dogs, Destiny look great, seem like a lot of fun, but you can experience them on both platforms, so I think it's a, a fair say to just throw those right out. What that means is we're going to focus on, for Xbox One, Killer Instinct, Rise, and Dead Rising 3, and for PlayStation 4, Knack, Infamous Second Son, and Killzone Shadowfall. Those are the exclusives, those are sort of the tentpole games, uh, or most of them, that I was able to see and play at E3, and I think will give you the best taste of what these systems have to offer. We'll also go into controllers and the boxes themselves, and in fact, that's what we're going to start off with, which is the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 hardware and controllers. I had the fortunate opportunity to use both controllers for over an hour at E3 this past week, and I can safely say um, that they're both good and bad in, in some, some different ways. We'll start off with PlayStation. Now, many of you know that for PS3, I really didn't like the controller. I did not like the lateral stick placement. I thought it felt light, cheap, not as good as the uh, Xbox 360 controller, but I'm happy to say, very happy to say, that the PlayStation 4 controller is a huge, huge step up. The sticks are great. I don't know what they did. It, it has to do with the grip and the size of them. They feel just great in your hands, uh, and they're not... They didn't change the placement, which, you know, you'd think that might be still a bother to me, but for, for whatever reason, in both first-person and third-person games, I love the sticks. I thought they felt great. Uh, the controller has a good weight to it in its hands. The triggers themselves are really nice. Um, I think they're a little bit awkward in terms of the way that they're angled, but they feel way better to me than the PlayStation 3 controller. As a whole, the PS4 controller is a huge step up. Now, I don't like the touchpad. I think it adds sort of a tacky look to the controller. Um, it's movable and depressible at every point, so you can push it in any of the corners or in the middle, and it will depress, which kind of gives it sort of a flimsy, almost plasticky look, and I think that if the controller was a little prettier, it would be close to a perfect controller. The buttons feel really good, the D-pad is, is stellar, and like I said, those sticks really do stand out being the right size, just enough ridges to make it really feel like you have total control. I really like the PlayStation 4 controller a whole lot. The little light bar in the back is, is cute and clever. I'm not sure how much it's going to do for actual game playing, but it does look good. And I think that overall, I like the PlayStation 4 controller better than the Xbox One controller, which was a big surprise to me. The Xbox One controller, I think, has better triggers. Um, they just fit right in your fingers. It feels perfect. Um, it's very flush, like you lay your hands on there and it, it almost doesn't even feel like triggers because they lay so perfectly. My big complaint though with the Xbox One controller is the sticks are just too small. They're too small and I have small hands. I, 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 I'm 6'3 and I have like good sized feet but my hands are small and so it's not like I have these giant fingers that can't deal with the, the tiny sticks. They really are just small and it feels a little weird especially when I was playing Battlefield 4 with the, the Xbox One controller or other first-person games, um, to be moving around, I don't know, there's something a little bit off that I wish they would change. The buttons are great, the D-pad is much improved, and the triggers feel really good. Bumpers are a little bit weird. Bumpers on the PlayStation 4 controller feel better, more natural. On Xbox One, they're a little bit weird. So I can't say that either controller is perfect, but I think I have to give the edge to the PlayStation 4 controller, which is a huge, huge surprise for me. And also, I have to give the edge to the PlayStation 4 box. It is a sexy system. It's angled, it's small, it really looks good. They got that PlayStation logo, bam, right on there. It, it's a hot piece of hardware. I really, really like the look of it. And Xbox One is pretty darn generic looking. Giant rectangle. Um, it's significantly bigger than the PlayStation 4. Not like huge. It's not as big as it looks in pictures. Um, but it's bigger, and it's basically just a giant rectangular box. There's no flair. There's no form factor that makes you go like, wow, that's going to look cool on my shelf. It's just like, it's a functional industrial box. Uh, not that that matters so much. The biggest focus should be on the games and the hardware, and both systems look really, really good. They put out some great graphics. Um, things are not optimized fully yet, so, so some of the frame rate issues, I assume they're going to get corrected, so I'm not going to really focus too much on there. There was rumors that Microsoft uh, was using PCs for all of their Xbox One demos, and I'm sure that they were using them for some of them, but I definitely saw Xbox One consoles on the show floor, connected to the TVs, they were right there, same with PlayStation 4. I also saw PlayStation 4 controllers connected to PCs, so I think that's sort of a moot point. Games aren't finalized, hardware isn't finalized, they're going to use some PCs for a lot of this stuff, but both systems looked really good. I will say that there is a clean, clean is the best word I can think of, for PlayStation 4 exclusives, um, that just, I don't know, turns the dial a little bit more for me than 
currently the Xbox One uh, title offerings. And you'll notice this if you watch some of the biggest PlayStation 3 uh, exclusive series, especially Uncharted and Infamous are the two big ones I can think of. Kills them a little bit as well. But sort of a clean look. I don't know a better way to explain it. I'm sure if you've seen these titles extensively, you know what I'm talking about. But Infamous Second Son and Kills on Shadowfall really retain that, that clarity and cleanness and crispness um, that is just... It's almost sterile, or it's almost too futuristic or something, but it looks really good in person. Um, Xbox One games look great as well. They're definitely a huge step up in graphical fidelity. I mentioned this before. If you're worried that this next generation isn't going to bump the visuals enough for you, let me say that in person, they look great. On YouTube and stuff like that, you can't really see all the finer details. The, the resolution isn't the best. The compression you know, is going to definitely downgrade the quality a little bit, but I was blown away by how good stuff like Infamous Second Son looked, even by how good Rise looked. Um, and so as we transition a little bit more into the games, I'm quite worried about both launch lineups for the consoles. You know, the big heavy hitters uh, exclusively for Xbox One are going to be Rise, Forza 5, and um, Killer Instinct and Dead Rising 3, those four. For PlayStation 3, it's going to be Drive Club, Knack, Killzone Shadowfall, and we'll see what else comes together. Um, I've played and seen all those games you mentioned. Drive Club is definitely a step down from Forza, but Killzone Shadowfall is so good that I think that kind of erases any of that, that discrepancy, as well as The Witness, which is an indie offering that wasn't at E3, um, but I'm very excited from Jonathan, Bl Jonathan Blow uh, for PlayStation 4. Jonathan Blow. Um, PlayStation 4, the killer title is going to be Killzone Shadowfall. The game looks great. They've expanded the environments. It's taking on more of a crisis feel, and you have this drone that follows you around all the time and can do things like zipline and put up a shield. Really interactive, almost combining crisis, resistance, and Killzone into this real gorgeous looking uh, package. I think that is going to be the standout title from either platform at launch. Dead Rising 3 looks really good though. I definitely like the direction they're going with that. It wasn't as graphically pretty as Killzone. Again, it's missing that clean clarity. I, there's got to be a technical term for it, but I'm not privy to what that would be at this this point. Uh, but Dead Rising 3 looked like a lot of fun. I'm very excited to play Dead Rising 3 and I'm very excited to play Killzone Shadowfall. Rise is so freaking linear. It's like the epitome of a console launch game and I I don't know what's going to become of that. The combat is fun, it's very Batman-esque, but if it's just like walk down the corridor, slice some guys with your sword, and move on to the next one, look at the pretty buildings falling, or Roman towers, that doesn't draw me in. Knack is in kind of the same boat. A very pretty game for PlayStation 4. It's got Mark Cerny at the helm, looking good. You think it could be a cool, maybe a little bit younger geared platformer. It's so freaking linear. Running down city streets, running down hallways, punching a couple non-threatening enemies. I was really disappointed. Um, the launch lineups themselves, are going to be mainly propelled by the third-party games, Assassin's Creed 4, Watch Dogs, Call of Duty, Madden, NBA, uh, FIFA, and then these singular exclusives, I feel. I feel like Killzone is going to be the big one for PlayStation, and Dead Rising will be the big one for Xbox One. And I think that based on that, I have to give the game edge to PlayStation, just because I think that even though Forza 5 will be a huge hit for, for Xbox One, and, and maybe you're really into Rise and the Roman theme, I think Killzone Shadowfall sets itself apart and feels more like a launch window game than a launch title game. Um, because a lot of the stuff I saw that is releasing spring 2014 was way better. Infamous Second Son, probably one of my games of the show, maybe my game of the show, looked absolutely incredible. And similarly with some of the Xbox One demos uh, that are for later on down the road. I think that Titanfall is going to be a very big... Um, swing title. It's either going to really, really give a huge boost the Xbox One come spring 2014 um, and change the landscape quite a bit, or it's not, and that's going to really reveal a lot about the consoles as well, but I think that's the one to watch out for for Xbox One, um, and then I'm not sure what the, the system mover after launch is for PlayStation 4. I know I said I wasn't going to get into speculation, but just to highlight some things, the Order 1866 from Sony Santa Monica is coming out in the launch window, as well as Infamous Second Son, and I think both those are going to be fantastic titles. I just don't know that they can move boxes, so I'm not really sure what title um, for either system, you know, Titanfall might come through, is going to move these consoles. It's mostly going to be the allure of next generation hardware, the allure of more power, more features, and cool controllers with really high-tech boxes. So if we, if we break things down, um, the PlayStation 4 controller, a little bit of an edge on the Xbox One. The PlayStation 4 launch games, because of Killzone specifically, a little bit of an edge on the Xbox One. Overall, game-wise, like I said, I'm not going to go into that. Xbox One announced a bunch of exclusives. PlayStation 4 has a good slew of things as well. The third party, who knows where they're going to really look better. So I, I don't even want to play speculation on that. I thought that as a whole, PlayStation 4 showed better on the E3 floor. Um, people seemed to be more excited about it. They had more to, to highlight. The Xbox One booth was cramped, crowded, and a little bit 
bare. I was a little bit concerned about how few things they had on display, even in terms of behind closed doors uh, or hands-off presentations. There just was not a lot there. A lot of people have, have kind of bashed me for praising the Xbox One for what it does. I think it does some really cool things, a forward-thinking box that is focusing on a digital-only future or a world that's moving towards that. Some really awesome, hot features that they did not mention are family sharing, where up to 10 people can have access to your game library. So if I buy Halo 5 and my brother wants to play it, he can play it. He does not have to purchase the game. And also, family gold accounts. So anyone in my household can use my gold account to access all the gold features. You only have to buy one per console. These two features are huge. I don't know why they did not really focus on these at E3 at all, or in their earlier conference, but they are gigantic features that, that could really sway the landscape in the coming months and in the coming year. The ability to buy a game and share it with up to 10 people, and I'm sure there's workarounds to get this for your friends and not just your direct blood family members, is going to be crazy. If I can buy, you know, Titanfall, and you can go buy Dead Rising 3, and then we can access each other's library and basically have two titles for the price of one... Well, dang, that's that's just about better than sharing the game directly, in my personal opinion. And I know that Sony does a lot great, too. Big kudos to them for going high on consumer satisfaction, avoiding a lot of the DRM and used game issues that Xbox One brings up, not requiring an always-on connection, not requiring a camera to be pointed at your face. A lot of that stuff, great goodwill moves, great just building of rah-rah momentum for the Sony brand. And this is the point where I give you the verdict on which system I would buy. The Xbox One is a $500 console, probably launching alongside Call of Duty Ghosts, this November. The PlayStation 4 is a $400 console, probably launching alongside Battlefield 4 or another title in late October, early November. I think a lot of people are expecting me to say one system, and in fact, I'm going to surprise most and say that I would personally pick the PlayStation 4 at launch as the title to buy, as the system to buy, as the console to pick up. I think that the price point and the parity with the game lineups uh, gives the edge to PlayStation 4. I think the excitement of Infamous Second Son and The Order 1866 in the launch window is pretty cool, and I think Killzone is going to be the standout title from either platform. Dead Rising 3, very cool. Killer Innocent could be fun. Project Spark, got some interesting things going on. Quantum Break, we have no idea when it's launching, and Dead Rising 3 does look really good. I'm definitely buying both systems. I have both pre-orders. I will have coverage and information on both come launch day, but I think that, as a whole, the controller improvements, the clarity of the graphics... The sort of standout nature of Killzone and Shadowfall, as well as their consumer friendliness right now, because we have not seen the full implications of cloud gaming of this family sharing plan. I don't know exactly how it all works. I'm going to give the edge to PlayStation 4. I thought they showed really well at E3. I thought they really brought it. And while I thought Microsoft's press conference was stronger, a lot of that is future-based. And Titanfall is going to be a huge one. Titanfall could drastically shift my opinion and drastically shift the landscape of which console is on top because it could be a Call of Duty-level title. We don't know yet. Respawn should make a standout game, but we have to wait and see. So as of right now, if you're looking to decide which system should I purchase, a better price point, a much-improved controller, a really, really good launch game, and the hope that their DRM and used game stuff will put them above leads me to recommend the PlayStation 4. I don't think you can go wrong with either system. I think they're both going to be really fun. I think they will have their bonuses and their benefits to each, and each platform in a year's time may look drastically different. Feature sets will be fully implemented. We'll know more about sharing. We'll know more about used games. We'll see how it all pans out with the third-party developers and how heavily they push or don't push pirac anti-piracy uh, you know, verification. But right now, I think if you are want the Ghost Robo pick, I give the slight edge to PlayStation 4, and that is my choice. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative. Trying to be as fair and level-headed as possible. I don't really like to gush for one platform or the either. I love all systems. I want them to be the best, the best they can be. Even the Wii U, I thought, had a really good showing at E3, and I'm excited to see where they go this fall and beyond. But right now, the edge goes to PlayStation 4. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below what you think and what system you think has the edge. Xbox One, PlayStation 4. Have you pre-ordered one? I know that there's very limited pre-orders for both systems, so you might want to get your hands on one as quickly as you can. But until that time, guys and girls, thanks so much for watching. Hit that like button if you enjoy. Drink some hot chocolate. Until next time, we'll see you all later.